What's up, Nets Soldiers on the Alliance? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing What Culture's uh, video is just called Star Wars 11 Moments That Pissed Off the Fans. So I'm going to see if these 11 moments piss me off. Let me know in the comments that these moments piss you off. Um, I'm pretty much just going to be comparing their opinions to mine. And if I think that they are justified, I'm going to give them an okay. But if I think that they're kind of nitpicking or just dumb, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. So let us begin. Number 11. Chewie doesn't get a medal, A New Hope. In the 40 years since A New Hope hit cinemas, fans haven't been able to let go of one little niggle at the very end of the movie. For all of his good service throughout the adventure and being such a sound lad in general, Chewbacca isn't awarded a medal alongside Luke and Han at the special ceremony. What gives? The expanded universe has occasionally bristled with the subject, mostly settling on the fact that Wookiees see no value in medals. Now that the EU is essentially kaput, though, that goes totally out of the window. Last year, Chewbacca himself, Peter Mayhew, made the more practical assessment that the only reason the filmmakers inadvertently enraged so many Chewie fans is that they either didn't have the money to make another medal, or more likely, Carrie Fisher was simply too short to put the medal around his neck, and there was no way to film the scene without it looking a little silly and a little clumsy. And hey, at least there's an excuse for this one, something which can't be said for Chewie not receiving a big old hug from Leia after Han's death. Number 10. Okay, so um, I never really cared about this one. I think that this is kind of one of those ones like, why didn't Chewie get a medal? Uh, for me personally, I think it didn't really matter to me. Um, I always just kind of accepted the, the idea that Chewbacca just doesn't, um, he doesn't accept medals like Wookiees don't see medals as like uh, as something that they actually take which makes sense you know if a Wookiee would dedicate their entire life to someone who would save them do you know um you'd think they'd have like a thing that was like well I dedicate myself to people who I find um who help me who um keep me alive and there's just no point for me to find, find value in like trivial things like a medal so um I can see that um I never really cared about that though, so I'm gonna give that one a thumbs down. But let me know in the comments below, like I said with all of these, um, do you think that's a big deal? Do you not care? Let me know, comments below. Okay, on to the next one. The No, Revenge of the Sith. Part learning from Darth City is that Padme has died, apparently at his own hand in Revenge of the Sith, a newly constructed Darth Vader breaks free from his restraints and utters a pained no. All right, I'm not James Earl Jones, but you get the idea. And look, you can see what they're trying to do here, but it basically derails an otherwise. What's a good? <laughs> ah. Woo! That was that was a good sneeze. All right, back to the back to the video. Everyone and their uncles made fun of the scene by now, but it's simply staggering that Lucas didn't realize how dumb it sounded in post production. Seriously, it wouldn't have even been a difficult fix. Just cut the line and have Vader silently fall down in anguish. That might have looked a little bit awkward, but it's infinitely better than the alternative. It never- Okay, so this one I think is a little nitpicky. Um, I understand this kind of making people mad. The whole, no, you know, I never minded it. I never looked at the no as the part that like ruined the scene. Do you know, I think the scene was a good- good scene it really shows the the turning point of darth vader and um i never really cared about the no um i mean he could just not yell anything but what else would he yell you know would he yell Padme, or i can't believe i did this i ruined my life i might as well be evil you know it doesn't make sense for him to do that so i think that um if he's gonna yell anything it makes more sense for him to be like no you know because in one word that sums everything up so I don't think this one's that big of a deal, um, but that's just me. So I'm gonna give this one a thumbs down. Number nine, the dropped plot threads, The Last Jedi. If you listen closely <laughs> at any given time and uh. really, really focus, you can always hear the rumble of accusations that Ryan Johnson ruined Star Wars, rippling throughout time and space, destined to echo forever and ever. The cosmic ballet goes on. Because yes, according to some fans, the director supposedly didn't get the franchise and what it was, and instead made a ham-fisted reduction that went against everything that makes Star Wars, well, 
Star Wars, or at least what some fans want it to be. And while I don't agree with all of the criticisms, I can at least see where some of the anger stems from, especially with the dropped plot threads in The Last Jedi. The Force Awakens established a series of open mysteries by its end, teasing that the sequels would provide some answers. Who were Rey's parents? Who was Snoke really? Who the hell were the Knights of Ren? These aren't the only ones, but they're the biggest, and they were all either ignored or answered with a flippant, these aren't the plot points you're looking for, Jedi mind trick. Number eight. Hans yeah, um, I agree with this. Um, she said it perfectly. I've covered tons of videos on this. Um, truth is, Last Jedi, it, it, it squandered a lot of potential um, in, in an attempt to catch us off guard, and that was the biggest, the biggest mistake it made. You know, it's the same thing as Iron Man three. You know, it uh, it squandered its potential to throw us off off its scent, and that's the that's what hurt it the most. So. I agree with that one. You guys get a thumbs up for me, Watch Culture. Let's keep on going here. Solo's death, The Force Awakens. He's a rare moment on this list that pissed fans off, but was actually meant to. As we all know, in The Force Awakens, Han Solo heads out on his own to confront his son Ben, aka Kylo Ren, but after trying to persuade him away from the dark side, Ren murders his own father by running him through with a lightsaber and allowing him to plummet off the walkway. It's easily the most devastating moment in the Star Wars franchise and still a fresh wound for a lot of fans. Not everyone may agree on how telegraphed and obvious the death scene was, but it sure as hell garnered the required reaction. Whether it may you angry for in-narrative reasons or because you just didn't like its execution, the scene really made everyone hate Kylo while pretty much guaranteeing that he won't be coming back over to the light side over the course of the next two movies. I wouldn't say it necessarily pissed me off. I think that um, Han Solo's, his story was done, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't say that pissed me off as a fan. I think it was okay though. Um, I think that if they're going to kill him off and you really wanted to drive Kylo home as like a true villain, that was a good way to do it, but then they instantly made him look like a, a sissy when he, he gets wrecked by Rey. So, I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm, I'm going to give that one kind of like a mid, you know? Not, not a thumbs up, not a thumbs down. I think it like a, like a sideways, you know? So, let's, let's see what you guys think. Number 7. The Anakin Padme Romance Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith Alright, where to even begin with this one? Anakin and Padme's romance in the latter two prequel movies is beyond painful, and though it's clear to anyone with a functioning pair of eyes and ears that Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman have absolutely zero chemistry whatsoever, the real issue here is Lucas's howlingly tone deaf script. The romance writing is just bad, it's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets, it gets everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Some of the more infamous moments include Anakin awkwardly hitting on Padme when they're reunited as adults, all of Anakin's hilarious, creepy staring. The most powerful Jedi ever. I don't like sand. It's coarse and it gets everywhere. I hate them! The sand monologue, the line, I'm haunted by the kiss you should never have given me, their love in at the meadow, and of course, Anakin. You're breaking my heart. Considering how much of these movies apparently hinge on the two being a convincing couple and, you know, eventually creating Luke and Leia, it's absurd how unambiguously terrible what passes for romance is in this prequel trilogy. I know this is going to cause some issues, but I honestly think that Anakin and Padme, um, I like them together. I think they look good. They're good looking people. I always liked them together. I thought that they did have like a certain chemistry. I don't know if I necessarily believe in his, that and his statement there, but um, a lot of it came down to the dialogue that kind of made it choppy. But the romance never pissed me off. You know, I always saw it more as um, it's just a story, you know, and you can kind of just, you can fall right into it and just keep on going. So I never had a problem necessarily with their romance. The dialogue with the romance and how the romance came together, maybe it was a little choppy, but overall, I like them together. So that's just... That's just me though. Number six, Padme's death, Revenge of the Sith. Speaking of romance, Padme may not have always been an easy character to like, but for the love of God, she surely deserved a less crappy death than this, right? I mean, she's not good, but she didn't deserve this. After giving birth to Luke and Leia, Padme promptly expires in the delivery room, having apparently lost the will to live for reasons nobody actually explains in the movie. It's such an anti-climax and just ends her tenure in the franchise on a hugely underwhelming note. Her death is necessary, of course. Nobody's really arguing against that or really cares about that, but could Lucas not have come up with something more interesting than this frustratingly vague, scared-to-commit explanation? It's like they left it to the night before 
more shooting and knew she had to go, and then just thought, ah, screw it, there's dumber stuff in here. People won't even notice. Who's going to remember the reason for this death when we've got a god-awful no coming right around the corner? I think that um, this is another one that I don't necessarily... This doesn't piss me off as a fan. Um, here's the thing. Star Wars is poetic. You know, um, it's reminiscent of Shakespeare. Best examples are like Macbeth, you know, the fallen hero story. Um, Romeo and Juliet, two lovers come together and both have tragic ends. Uh, Anakin and uh, Padme. So it's poetic. Um, to have a character die like that is a poetic way to kill off um, kill off Padme. Now the thing about it is that in one way you can necessarily believe that because people have died of broken hearts in real life before. Um, you can essentially kill yourself because uh, of depression. You, your heart will just stop and you, you just your mental state will kill you. And it's, it's happened to people before. Um, I also like the idea that um, Padme actually faked her death and actually went into hiding to help build the rebels initially. Um, that one's a complete this theory of mine, but I thought that'd be a cool concept to, to think that maybe that's, maybe she's still out there, even in, in The Force Awakens or something, you know what I mean? I doubt it, but hey, you know, it's Star Wars, anything can happen. This just doesn't piss me off, but I do understand why people would be pissed. So I'm going to give this one an, a, a middle, a middle, you know what I mean? It doesn't get, a, it doesn't get up, it doesn't get it down, it gets a middle. Midi chlorians the Phantom Menace. Lucas learned the classic screenwriting lesson the hard way. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop him here. Uh, Midichlorians, I never cared about this. I think that this completely gets blown out of proportion. I think it is the scientific way to explain why um, why the Force happens. Um, we all have different reasons for why we view things the way we do. Some people will be walking in a field and trip over their feet and be like, oh, I fell, God tripped me because of this reason, when actually they just tripped because they tripped, you know? It's the scientific reason compared to the superstitious reason, and I think that's just the difference between the Force and the Chlorians. Is they're essentially the same thing; they just are viewed in different ways. So, shut down that argument right there. Um, never been pissed off about it. Never really cared about it. So, I'm gonna give this one a thumbs down. On to the next one. Number four, General Grievous, Revenge of the Sith. Easily one of the most exciting aspects of Revenge of the Sith was the introduction of the new villain, General Grievous, who sported four arms, each holding its own lightsaber. There's nothing cooler than that, especially when you were me and were a child and saw these flipping things going all over the place. It was You're just, right. it was You're awesome. Right. But then the movie came out and, to fans' horror, he ended up being extremely lame. He was a surprisingly mild antagonist in the end, who put up much less of a fight against Obi-Wan than most of us expected. And sadly, this is the prequel trilogy all over, really. Underwhelming villains who look awesome in a trailer or on a lunchbox, but don't really live up to the hype at all. He did end up making Obi-Wan look like a total G, though, so there is that. And he... I'll give this to them. I'll give it to him. I think that... It didn't necessarily piss me off, but um, it does disappoint me because uh, Grievous definitely could have had more of an impact in the story. Definitely more of um, something bigger with his character, stuff happening with him, and he kind of gets uh, left behind. So, overall, I'm going to give them a thumbs up on this one. Number three, Ewoks. Ewoks everywhere. Return of the Jedi. All right, so the Ewoks are cute and all, and they do... Okay, I'm going to stop them there, too. Um, I never minded the Ewoks. I think it's a really cool idea that the Ewoks could overcome um, an empire. I understand the idea that they're just little teddy bears, but I always use the concept of, so imagine if you were dressed in armor and you had a gun. If there was a cat that could wield weapons, if you, you'd be able, one cat, you'd be able to probably shoot that cat, right? Now, put two to three dozen cats in front of you. Doesn't matter what weapon you have, if those cats know how to fight and kill you, they're going to get you. Like, and it doesn't matter what armor you're wearing, they're going to kill you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, especially if you're on their turf. You're in a spot where you don't even see them. So they're like in the trees, they can jump down on top of you. Um, and these are big cats then, right? These would be big cats if they were the, the size of Ewoks. So I think right away, right there, that's instantly like a, a massive thing. The movie doesn't show how many Ewoks there are, but there are thousands and thousands of Ewoks when there's probably about like maybe... 200, 300 troops at, at, on, on Endor. So I mean like, yeah, they're outnumbered. And I think that not only are they outnumbered, but they're also on the, not on their turf. So that's why the Ewoks win. And that's why I have no problem with the Ewoks. Sue me. Number two, Greedo shoots first, a new hope special edition. When Lucas decided to re-release- Okay, I already know what he's gonna talk about. So this is uh, Greedo shoots first and then Han kills him. And the, the whole thing is Han shot first. Here's the thing. 
I don't care. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I did a bit, did plenty of videos on this type of thing before, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think that people blow this out of proportion. Either way you look at it, I understand it's like, oh, it kind of ruins his character, but it doesn't. You know, Han Solo, I don't really see it as an improvement or a lessening of his character. I just kind of see it as Han um, being Han. He was just defending himself. And um, either way, uh, Greedo was going to die. I don't know. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that this is a big deal or do you think this is completely one of those things that are completely blown out of proportion? It doesn't matter. There's bigger problems in this universe than just that. Number one, Jar Jar Binks, The Phantom Menace. And finally, nothing else was going to ever make the top spot, was it? I mean, it's Jar Jar Binks, a walking punch bag since 1999. People have been perfecting jokes about him before I even understood what jokes are. I... <laughs> Okay, so this one is this one I have to give a thumbs up to, but here's at the same time I gotta give it a thumbs down, but I can't give it an in between because I'm, I'm on both sides. First off, I understand that Jar Jar is a complete joke of a character, but on the other side, I love him. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's so interesting because how a character can be so hated but also so loved at the same time. So let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think? Do you love Jar Jar or do you hate him? Let me know comments below. But that is the end of this video where I reviewed the Star Wars 11 moments that pissed off every fan from Walk Culture. Do you guys want to see more videos like this where I review other people's videos? If you do, let me know in um, the comments below. Go to my Discord, send me some links of um, videos to check out. Maybe I'll do a review on them, give you a little bit of a shout out or something like that. Um, like I said, if I use your video, I'll give you a shout out. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more of these, let me know in the comments below. And remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications for more. And until next time guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.